hello, hello. Happy Friday to you guys. Good morning. Holy cow, we're at the end of week two. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Chen. Good morning, Jenna. Happy Friday to you guys. It's getting a little chilly outside, isn't it? Are you embracing the fall season? Or are you desperately clinging to summer? Good morning, Finbar. Happy Friday, Stanfield. Paul says winter is coming. Good morning, Clammer. Finbar, I'm wearing an alpaca poncho. No alpacas hurt in the process. I hope not. Alpacas are adorable. Bill's Super Bowl run is coming. Uh, don't we trick ourselves into that every year, though? Hmm? Go Bills, but let's, let's be real. <laughs> Hey, Chimney Stacks, good morning. Johnsta says, go Bills. Ben says, this is the year, and Johnsta agrees. I mean, we'd love to see it. Okay. Um, are you guys ready to do some coding today? I have a little bit of notes. Uh, there's no handout up, um, but we're, we're not writing too much today. We're gonna be mostly coding in MATLAB. It's a MATLAB day. But we're gonna start over here. Okay, I should update this title really quick. Okay. It's Friday and we're talking about gear selection for accelerate. No, it's just too much. Let's just do gear selection. Let's get this night light off. Okay. All right, let's get right into it, my friends. Okay, so just to refresh you on the problem that we're doing. We have a cyclist and they're doing a 1000 meter race. So very short distance, one kilometer. And um, so I'm just, I'm just going back. Um, there's three gears that they can choose. Um, so we know on, on a bicycle you have the front chain ring and then you have a rear gear as well and uh, so one of these rear gears has 11 teeth one has 20 teeth one has 32 teeth and we're gonna assume that the the front gear we're just always gonna stick with 53 teeth so that results in three different gear ratios and this is how our cyclist produces torque as a function of their pedaling speed. So you can see here that the bigger this pedaling speed gets, the torque will linearly drop off. So the most torque you can produce is 150 Newton meters when you're pedaling at zero RPM. So like just once you get the bike going. So like I said, we're trying to finish a race of 1000 meters. So given this is the torque you can produce and given the uh, gear ratios that you have what are you gonna do so we're gonna figure that out today and we're mostly gonna use MATLAB um, 
So what we did is we started with this diagram of a bicycle and we went through Newton's second laws and I'm gonna skip right to the result because we got a function for the acceleration as a function of um, of the well input torque right now so this is uh, by the way this is related to the homework that's assigned right now um, I mean in the homework I, I give you a fixed gear ratio uh, and I think the cyclist is producing constant power in that problem which which we know isn't totally realistic you can't do a constant power it, it kind of changes um, but I digress we we got to this point using Newton's laws now what I want to do here is substitute in our expression for the torque as a function of pedaling rate so I'm just gonna modify this equation a little bit maybe I'll maybe I'll just copy this I'm gonna copy you I'm gonna paste you here and I'm gonna replace this torque expression with that function for the torque so it's 150 newton meters minus 5.73 times our pedaling rate all right so this gives us a function for the acceleration of the bike in terms of the gear ratio and your pedaling rate so I'm defining R2 over R1, so the ratio of the radius of the rear cassette to the front chain ring. I'm defining that as the gear ratio, and we have three choices for this. And then we have our pedaling rate. Okay, now we know our goal here from day one, if you want to finish a race as fast as possible, you should be maximizing acceleration the whole time. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go into MATLAB now, and we're going to plot this acceleration as a function of our pedaling rate. And we're going to look at what that function looks like for all three gear ratios. Okay, we're going to go over to MATLAB. Are you ready to follow along? We're going to do a lot of coding today. And you're going to see my blazing fast um, typing speed. Okay, so I like to start all my MATLAB codes with a clear all and a close all at the top. So this clears all your variables. It closes any figures you might have open so things don't get cluttered. Now, I'm going to define some of our parameters that we're going to need for the plotting. So number one, we need the mass of the cyclist with the bicycle. So 70 kilograms is the mass of our cyclist plus the mass of the bicycle, tires, everything. I'm gonna define some moment of, of inertia for each tire. I don't think I defined this in the problem statement, but I'm just gonna say it's 0.2 kilograms times meters squared. That's kind of typical for a bicycle tire. I did my research and the radius of the tire, 0.4 meters. All right, and I'm gonna define a vector of my three different gear ratios and just to remind you I'm defining gear ratio as R2 divided by R1 and I think that's opposite of um, when you're actually talking about a bike I think they do R1 over R2 so why am I switching it to R2 over R1 because this is gonna be the way we define a gear ratio for cars and we're gonna be dealing with those starting next week and just for the rest of the semester 
So we're graduating from bicycles. So we're going to use that definition. So one gear ratio is 32 over 53. So the ratio of teeth on the rear cassette to the front chain ring. 20 over 53 is another option and 11 over 53. So I'm putting all three options in a vector. And so if I wanna access one of those, you guys know from MATLAB, like if I wanna pick the, f the first gear ratio, I can just say gear ratio first index. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Okay. Now, 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 now. I want to plot acceleration as a function of pedaling speed. So I'm going to define a vector of pedaling speeds. And I'm going to, so I'm going to call it theta p dot. So it's the velocity. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put it in RPM first. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to define a vector from zero up on to 250 RPM which getting up to 250 that's pretty insane but we're just going to define that as the theoretical limit here and i'm going to distribute 501 points between 0 and 250 so that's how lin space works it makes a vector 0 to the max number you define and then it evenly distributes this many points in between all right and then just because i'm going to need this later Theta P. I'm also going to define a variable that's in terms of radians per second. So to convert RPM to radians per second, two times pi divided by 60. Boom. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what this little apostrophe is, that's not on accident. In MATLAB, that's the transpose operation. So Linspace, just by itself, it creates a row vector. So this is just like a long string of numbers horizontally. And then this transpose turns it into a column vector. I just prefer a column vector. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. You can do the same kinds of operations with either. But that's what I prefer. Okay. So we need a function for the acceleration. So I'm going to call that x double dot. And this acceleration is different depending on the gear that I'm in. OK, so I'm going to make three of these. I'm going to make one for each gear. And I'm just going to take the equation that we had had written out a second before in terms of the pedaling rate. So um, just trust me here. So I'll take the first gear ratio uh, divided by the radius of the tire. Let's put some parentheses around this. Okay, times 150. So this is our expression for the torque, minus 5.73 times theta p dot. And this is the one, so I should put this up here. I mean, this is kind of obvious. This is an RPM. This one's in radians per second. And so this is why I made the radians per second variable, because in our acceleration equation, I need that radians per second. And remember, this is a vector quantity. Are you going to post this code after class? No, I'm not. I actually thought about that because I want you to tapity tap tap away at the keyboard yourself and do this code. So you can come back to the video, you can follow along, or you can be doing it right now if you have access to a computer, but I'm not going to post this. That's intentional. Okay. All right, and then I need to divide this product, this whole thing, 
by this kind of equivalent mass. Mass plus two times the inertia of the tire. Fin bar says rip. Hey, you gotta learn to love, you gotta learn to love this in this class. You're gonna be doing a lot of it. It's the truth. Okay, we're done with this expression. This is the acceleration as a function of pedaling speed if I choose gear one. But your videos still be uploaded, right? Oh, of course. Of course, all my videos are uploaded, my friends. You can find them right now on Twitch and on YouTube. They're all there. Okay. And this is, this is, so we're gonna, we're gonna make this for all three gear choices. So all that I need to change here is the entry of this gear ratio vector. So I'm picking different gears. Okay, brilliant. Now we're gonna plot all three of these acceleration lines as a function of pedaling rate. So my horizontal axis, I'm going to choose my pedaling rate, but I'm just gonna put RPM because that's kind of the easier unit for me to think of what that means. So we're gonna plot this versus acceleration for the first gear and I'll make this red. If you use dot times and dot divide, you should be able to do all of that in one line. Not in this case. Wait, 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 wait. Because it'll do element-wise division, but these are different size. If you do element-wise, they have to be the same size. This is a th this is a one by three vector, and this is a one by five hundred one. So you can't do element-wise division. They gotta be the same size. Okay. Now just to save space, I'm gonna use this comma dot dot dot, and that allows you to like continue on a separate line. I don't know if you guys knew that, but it's nice if you if you find that some of your lines of code are just running way off off the page to the right. Why did I choose 501 for the lint space? I just wanted to densely cluster some points in between 0 and 250 to make my graph buttery smooth. I mean, it might be overkill, but okay. And then we'll make gear 2 uh, a blue line. And then I, I have one more to plot here. Gear 3. So this is going to be pedaling speed versus acceleration for all three gears let's make this last one green uh, if you want to have slightly thicker lines you can use this line width command and I like line width too I think that generally looks pretty good we're gonna turn on a grid here grid on that puts just a grid in the background and then you cannot neglect to label your axes Otherwise, nobody will know what the heck you're plotting. Pedaling rate, RPM, Y label, um, bike acceleration, and this one's in meters per second squared. So I'm really clear. And then I'm gonna put a title. Acceleration as a function of pedaling rate. And then I'm gonna put like parentheses, all gears. Finally, we got to make a legend or you're not going to know which line is which. So um, the first line that I plotted was the gear ratio was 32 over 53. And then, oh no, I deleted it. I meant to copy it. I'm going to do the other gear ratio. So the second one I plotted was 20 over 53. And then finally, 11 over 53. 
Now the, the real question is when I run this, is it gonna give us an error? 90% of the time, the first time you run a MATLAB code, it's just like, doot, you forgot this or that. All right, I'm gonna run this. Run it. Oh, it worked. Let's make this bigger or smaller. So, okay, you see acceleration as a function of pedaling rate for all gears. The red line, gear ratio is 32 over 53, and so on and so forth. Um, let's break this down a little bit. For all pedaling rates, 0 to 250, this gear ratio, 32 over 53, produces the most acceleration. So... My first question to you, my friends, should I just always be in this gear? Because I know that if I'm pedaling at a certain rate, this gear will be producing the most acceleration at that pedaling rate. What say you? If the power is unlimited, you could do it. Doesn't come down to that. All right, I'm gonna let's let's go back over to this really quick. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so just like I said, we see that a gear ratio of 32 over 53 produces the high highest acceleration for all pedaling pedal I can't talk <sighs> guys it's it's this is more basic than power right here you'll see um, why not always use this gear ratio this is this is a more basic thing the same pedaling rate in different gears produces different road speeds now think about this your road speed x dot is the tire radius times the tire angular velocity now the tire angular velocity is different than the pedaling rate um so you're you're pedaling at this rate you multiply that pedaling rate by this gear ratio or i guess this is one over the gear ratio and um that'll be your road speed So let, let me break this down a little bit more for you. For example, at the top theoretical pedaling rate for this problem, which is 250 RPM, the road speed in each gear is gonna be very different. Very different. Let me pull up these numbers. For example, if you got up to 250 rpm in this gear you'd be going approximately 39 miles per hour which is actually already uh, really fast on a bike um, but for this other gear for that same pedaling rate you're actually going much much faster background music a little high now oh let's pack it down And for this gear ratio, now this is just theoretical. If you could get up to 250 RPM, you'd be going um, 113 miles per hour. Okay, so the point I want to make is even if, even if, you're in um, this gear that produces higher acceleration for a giving pedaling rate. By necessity, you would need to switch gears once you cap out at a certain speed at the maximum pedaling rate. 
right? So you, let, let's say I, I get up to 39 miles per hour. Well, in this problem, you can't pedal any faster. So by necessity, I'd have to advance to this gear ratio. Um, okay, then that begs the question. Does that mean that you should just switch gears whenever you reach the maximum pedaling rate and you top out? And I already uh, gave a little answer here, not necessarily. Let's go back to MATLAB. We're gonna make this, we're gonna make this nice and clear. What set of notes are we on? I can't find it. Okay, this one hasn't been posted, Kraz. Um, I, I'm writing a little bit of notes today, but, and, and I will post these notes. But we're just mostly working in MATLAB today, so. Okay. What I want to do, because pedaling rate doesn't tell the whole story. I want to plot acceleration as a function of road speed instead. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these, we're going to take these pedaling rates and convert them into road speeds. So I'm going to, I'm going to insert that up here. So X dot, if I'm in first gear, it's related to theta P dot, but through the gear ratio and the radius of the tire. So I got to take the radius of the tire, divide it by my first gear ratio. Uh, let's put a parentheses around this just to be safe. So if my pedaling speed is this in radians per second, if I multiply it by this, that gives me my bike speed in meters per second. Bike speed, meters per second. So let's do this for all three gears. When you see this, this is very cool. This is going to be very cool. Okay. Let's make let's make a new figure. I'm going to copy all of this stuff. Cuz we're going to put it to use. Um Maybe I'll just I'll insert this new block of code like right here so we can still keep an eye on everything. Okay, so now, instead of plotting uh, pedaling speed as my horizontal axis, I'm going to do my bike speed for the different gears. So, x dot gear 1. But I, I want to convert this to miles per hour. So, you multiply it by this to go from meters per second to miles per hour. So I'm going to do this speed for, um, I'm going to update these for each gear. So now I'm going to have bike speed in gear one in miles per hour versus the acceleration in meters per second squared. So I got to update my axes here. Bike speed, miles per hour acceleration as a function of bike speed this is this will be cool when you see this okay so let us let's just run this code again uh oh I got an error what did I do Oh, okay, so I, I have to, I'm plotting X double dot, but in my code, I actually calculate it down here. So let's take this and we'll just plot it at the very bottom. Boom, that should fix that problem. Oh, look at this.
Let's like zoom in a little bit here. Okay, let, let's break this down. So in this gear ratio, 32 over 53. Um, now look, the horizontal axis is bike speed. So each of these lines is going from zero to 250 RPM in terms of pedaling rate. But we know that in this gear at 250 RPM, I top out around 40 miles per hour. In second gear at 250 RPM, I top out around 60. And in that other gear, well, it's super fast. You can't really get there probably, but it tops out around something like 112. Now you get this interesting relationship now as a function of road speed and you see that. Let's start on the left hand side. If I start at zero miles per hour, I should pick this gear ratio. 32 over 53 because at zero miles per hour that gear is going to give me way more torque and then as I increase speed once I get here what is that like 23 miles per hour or something well now if I stay in this gear um, I'm actually going to be getting less acceleration than if I switch to this blue gear ratio which is 20 over 53 You see where I'm going with this? And then I stay in the blue because for these road speeds in here, the blue has the most acceleration, but once I get to right around 40 miles per hour, I should switch to the other gear. So basically you wanna be tracing this contour of maximum acceleration and whichever gear is kind of on top here at that road speed, it is the gear that produces the most acceleration. That's how you answer the question. When you plot these graphs, you, you, we're going to plot these graphs for cars. I think that'll be our next homework. Um, so it's, it's a function of your engine power and torque as a function of engine speed. But you can make a graph just like this for a car and you can plan what are the best gear transitions as a function of road speed that get me down the track the fastest. Pretty cool, right? Okay, the, the next thing I wanna do is uh, in the current homework, I ask you to simulate the motion of a bicycle using the Euler forward method. Um, that's just a simple method of integration. And if, if you have another way of, use, of, of integrating that you're comfortable with, that, that's fine with me. But I just wanted to make sure you know the most basic, you get that intuitive way. So the next thing I wanna do is knowing at which speeds we should transition, why don't we do an Euler forward simulation of this cycling race? We can use ODE 45? Sure. Sure. If you like ODE 45, use it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go on to another segment of code here. Simulating the race using ODE 45. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm gonna use Euler forward. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let me show you the principle of Euler forward. Um, so it, it operates within a loop. So, I'm gonna cut this race into a series of snapshots in time. And how many snapshots I'm gonna do in snapshots. Maybe, I don't know, let's do 501. So imagine you're taking a photograph of this cyclist 501 times um, at even time intervals. 
let's define those time intervals. Let's say I take one every half a second. So this is like my sampling interval in seconds. Every time half a second passes, I take a snapshot of the state of the cyclist. So if you think about how much time has elapsed for this race, Professor Singh's, Singh loves ODE 45 so much. It, it's a good function. It's a good function. But I like you to see o, uh, Euler forward just because it's um, very transparent in what it's doing. It gives you a good understanding of integration. ODE 45 is doing basically the same thing, just with a more complicated numerical scheme. Okay, so my time is going to start at time zero, snapshots of DT. Um, oh, I, I'm going to need this number of steps here. And then I'm taking 501 snapshots. I think it's going to be n minus one times dt. Like that'll be my final time. Like if I took 10 snapshots starting at time zero, and if I, uh, basically I'm saying the final time is n minus one times dt. Okay, so Euler forward is a way of, if you have the function for the acceleration of this bike at each time, then you should be able to predict where it's gonna be at the next, next snapshot in time. And it's a really simple way of doing it. So like, let's say my speed uh, right now is x dot at snapshot k. Well, what is my speed going to be half a second from now? So in other words, K plus one. So if I'm at the K snapshot right now, what's my speed half a second from now at the K plus one snapshot? Well, Euler forward would say, okay, take my acceleration right now. So I have my current speed. Now add to that speed your current acceleration times the time interval. Done. That's the most simple prediction of what my uh, time will be at the next step. And similarly, if I want to get my position uh, one time step in the future, it's going to be where am I right now plus the velocity right now times that time interval. So it's basically saying um, position over time times the time interval is the change in position. So I add my current position to the change in position over that time. Okay. So that's all Euler forward is. That's why I like to show it to you. It's, it's easy to understand. Um, and as long as the time step is very small, it works for nonlinear systems as well. So it's, um, it is a powerful tool. I know people knock on Euler forward, but it is a good approach as long as the time step is small enough for the dynamics you're looking at. Okay, so within this loop though, we have to calculate what the acceleration is. So I'm gonna make a line up here that for a given snapshot, it says, okay, what is my acceleration at this time? Well, fortunately, we can recycle an expression from up above. Because wait, what is X? Okay. Because I know what, depending on the gear I'm in, X double dot. Oops, I'll get this out of here. So X double dot is the gear ratio that I choose. So this is the example for first gear. Um, Okay, I'm gonna have to know my pedaling speed at this time shot, time, or the snapshot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to calculate my my pedaling rate in here as well. But even this pedaling rate deter uh, depends on which gear I'm in. So like, uh, let's just put this in here for now. 
I know the pedaling rate is one over the radius of the tire times whatever gear ratio. So let's say it's like first gear times my pedaling, my, my bike speed at this point. So basically, given a bike speed, given a gear ratio, this equation tells me like what my pedaling rate is at this time. So the way this loop is flowing is it's like, okay, if I have my pedaling rate, which I need my gear ratio, well, then I can predict my acceleration. If I can predict my acceleration, then I can use Euler forward to predict my velocity. Okay, so it's simple as that. Um, okay, but we're, we, we have to pick a gear in here before we start this whole sequence. Because I, I have this for gear ratio one right now, but we know that depending on the road speed, I'm going to pick a different gear. So how do we incorporate that in here? Well, from the graph we made earlier, I'm, I'm going to make some if statements. If the speed, so if my current speed is less than around 24 miles per hour, because that's when the first uh, intersection came up. So when the speed's less than 24 miles per hour, I should pick this gear, the red one, 32 over 53, which at the top, I define that to be gear ratio one. So as long as the speed is less than 24, I should pick that gear. So I'm gonna say, if X dot is less than 24 miles per hour, but I'm gonna convert this back to meters per second. So I gotta divide by 2.23. 694. So I'm saying if x dot is less than, you know, that, then, um, well, I'm going to pick first gear. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> okay. If that speed is less, then I'm going to pick first gear right and uh yeah thank you thank you paul and the the acceleration will also be uh, a function of first gear so these two lines are valid for um if that speed is less now but we know that's not the only case else if because another option is that um because once I get above 24, once I get to about 40, and if you really zoom in here, it's 40.07. Okay, so else. So let's say I don't satisfy this first condition. Let's say, well, I'm not less than 24. Okay, then this sequence is going to say, well, okay, are you less than 40? So if I'm somewhere between there, then I'm gonna pick my second gear and I'm just gonna, so this, this is gonna take care of the case where I'm in second gear. May God bless your soul. Thank you, Hank. I appreciate that. You as well. And then Let's say you, you don't satisfy this. You say, well, like, well, I'm not less than 24 and I'm not less than 40. Well, that means you must be uh, greater than 40. And you should be in third gear, my friend. What are you waiting for? And that's what this last case does. And then you, you got to put an end around the whole thing. So for this last case, I got to pick gear three. So if you just looked at this for loop by itself, you might be like, um, ooh, there's a lot going on there. But when you break it down like this, it's not. Chin says, how about you just define gear ratio and change it in the loop so we just use the same sentence? You could do that too. This may not be the most efficient code, but I do think it's useful for explaining the process. Okay, so basically, right when I go into the loop, I'm asking, what's your road speed? Okay, then based on your road speed, I give you what your pedaling rate would be 
if you're picking the right gear for that road speed and I tell you what your acceleration would be um, then knowing that information I go right into Euler forward and predict your dynamics one time step from now and then based on these new quantities we go back into the for loop again and we check like you should increase in speed obviously we're trying to win a race so when I come back in here my speed will be higher and maybe I jump into a different bin okay is there anything else I need here oh I need to define my initial conditions because you have to start somewhere so let's say my initial position is zero um heck why don't we say we started with zero velocity as well i know in the example in the notes i listed that you start at two meters per second but heck let's start it let's start at rest okay and then once this loop is done we want to plot position as a function of time actually let's plot velocity as a function of time so time uh, x dot wait I should multiply I should convert x dot to miles per hour that'll look better let's make that a thick line turn on the grid x label is now gonna be time in seconds y label my bike speed, my velocity in miles per hour. Let's run it. Do you think I'm gonna get an error? It's very possible and then we'll address that issue if it comes up. Okay, I did get an error. XK, mine 45. Oh, this should be one. Oh, and then this should be one to in minus one actually. Because if I'm doing in time steps, if this went from one to in, well, check this out. I would be predicting in plus one, and that would be too much. It'd be one too many, in fact. All right, let's try this again. Oh, -ho. look at that. This is my bike speed as a function of time. You can see that my acceleration at the beginning, it's high, which is what I'm expecting from this graph. Like my acceleration over the race, even if I'm picking the best gear, should be decreasing um, as a function of time. So that's why you see big gains in velocity at the beginning, and then it just becomes less and less and less and less and less. Now we don't have much time left, so I don't have time to, that's a fast, but yeah, I know that re remember we're not including aerodynamic drag. Um, so this, this, this isn't the most realistic, but, but it gets the point across. I think it's instructive. Um, I made another code. which I want to show you. We won't have time to do this part together, but what I did is um, I made a code where over the course of the race, you see how the velocity is changing with time. So I made a little animation and then I show where the person is in terms of their torque and power. So let's go back over here. Maybe I just want this. If I run this, is this going to do what I want it to do? Oh, here you go. I got to move this down. So you see, this is where they are in the race in terms of their bicycle speed. But then I'm showing their pedaling rate at that time. And where the power is. <clears throat> so choosing the gear that maximizes the acceleration i'll run this again but it puts you 
it puts the cyclist in a situation where they tend to be pedaling around this peak RPM zone. Maybe I'll run this again from the beginning. Pause. Quit. Oh, let's run this again and try to. Okay, get ready. So we're starting the race and we get boom right up into here. And then we switched gears. Did you see it jump back? That was the first gear transition. The second one's coming up. Boom, we switched again. And then we don't have any, for this problem, there's only a third gear. So, um, but you can see by picking gear ratios cleverly, you can keep operating in this like range where the person produces their most power. So most of this race, they're in this RPM range of whatever it is, like around 150, where they're uh, producing the most power. We'll run it one more time. Boom. We're in that zone. We switched into second gear. And then in a little bit, we'll switch into third to like keep operating in that power band. Just making sure, are you posting a lecture so I can follow along when I'm doing the code? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna post this lecture. And um, so you'll be able to follow along, make this code. Like I said, the reason, so I'm not gonna post this code just as an M file on UB Learns and, and I'm intentional about doing that. I want you to grind through this code because um, you need to get to a point where you're super comfortable with MATLAB. Is this animation, it changed with three gear ratios as well? Yeah, that's right, that's right. This is changing gears. I'll run it one more time. I'll show you where the gear transition happens. Okay, watch this. Now watch this. This is gonna jump back over here. That's when the gear change happened. When you see that ball jump over, it's gonna do it again. It'll be another gear change. Boom, that was a gear change. 100% I'm into that. I need the practice. Yeah. No, this is, I think this is a great way to learn MATLAB. You you pick a cool problem and then uh, you just follow along step by step. Um, uh, probably the best practice, this isn't the fastest practice, but the best practice is to try to make your own code from scratch. And when you get totally stuck, that's when you, you know, you Google the MATLAB documentation or you can refer to this video. That's the same thing I do when I get, I get stuck on code still for different things, but I practice so much that I can quickly put together a code like this. Now, the thing that you might find is that uh, I think Chin mentioned as I was making my code, like Chin would have done it differently and more efficiently. The code I did today, maybe you're like, oh, like, your reasoning, I would have done it this way. It makes more sense that way. Um, and, and that's why I think you should do your own because often the way somebody else codes is not gonna make the most sense to you. Uh, Laughter Haha -ha says, can you make the if statement to change something about the figure when the gear chain happens? Like, like maybe the plot color? Oh, let's try it. Uh, oh, this one, I, this one, I didn't put any if statements. I could, I would have to do, um, I would have to put an if statement in here. Like once the road speed changes, then I could change like the color of the plot. You could put, you, you could, if you put hold on and plot within the loop. Yes. Yes, like um, I could be generating this plot. Let's go back over. Uh, like here, this was my Euler forward loop. I could be making a plot like that uh, with, in the same structure of this logic. Yeah, 
Uh, maybe I'll... Yeah, but if you're interested in going back and doing an animation like I did, let me just show you. Um, this theta p dot, this I generated from the Euler forward loop. So I already have this vector. So this gives me the power and torque as it happened during the race. Then I'm going through step by step and I'm recalculating the power and torque, but just um, I'm calling it a different variable just at a slice in time. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to plot this slice in time on top of the full figure. So like when I run this, let's do it one more time. The torque and power variables, those are the red line. That's just from the history of the race. And then TK and PK, that's the torque and power uh, that I'm just doing with the dot. Like it just represents a slice in time. And um, let's pause that. And then I'm, I'm to make the two plots, you use the subplot command. And so on the left plot, I'm plotting um, Oh, this is the full history of the velocity. And then I'm holding that plot. And then I'm just plotting a slice of that velocity using a black dot with a large marker size. And then the plot on the right, same thing, but I'm plotting power. And then you use this draw now command to refresh the plot and then like blink it again. And if you want, you can even save the animation to a video. If you're interested in more details on that, um, you look up the git frame command on MATLAB documentation, but you can capture each of the frames, save it to a video file. You can even specify the frame rate. It's pretty sweet. So you can make cool little videos and animations and stuff. All right, guys. That's it. I hope you enjoyed following along. I hope you learned something. Um, this Euler forward stuff, if you haven't finished the other homework yet, we'll get started, by the way. But there's an integration problem where you're simulating in the bicycle race, so this will help you structure a code for that. Um, but that's it. That's it for today, my friends. Man, it's Friday. I hope you have a good Friday. already the second week I know have a dope weekend you too um, oh yeah then and, and uh, I'm gonna be on office hours tonight 4 30 to 5 30 on discord so come by get some homework help have an awesome weekend Jenna very bloke chimney stack sample uh, Phil oh you're hunting all weekend good for you Flammer, have a great weekend MCAT have a nice weekend my friend DD Josh, I have a quick question. Yeah, yeah, what's what's your question?
BJ Reiner. Have a great weekend. It's regarding homework, but I'm going to come to your office. First. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come by. We'll chat about it. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic Friday. I'll see you on Monday, if not office hours. Have a great day.